Welcome to the Rural Reboot Podcast. I'm your host, Sage Goodwin, and today I'm joined with Kat Reynolds from Cat Fox Design, and you are a design and digital marketing agency, right? Yes. Before we jump into some of your history, could you talk a little bit about what your business is and kind of some of the, the problems that you solve? So I focus on website design, branding design, um, including logo design and digital marketing. So once you have an online presence on your website, social media, you know, how do you reach your ideal market? Mm -hmm. Um, So that's what I focus on. And I help small businesses in particular. I do have a specialization in e-commerce as well um, to sell products or services online. But yeah, I help small businesses, you know, start up their online presence or just improve existing online presence. Mm -hmm. And that's something too that as we see the the availability for like businesses to be a lot broader, like you don't have to just necessarily have local people and like tourists. Mm -hmm. Now you can really say, hey, I have this product. Everyone's my customer now. And how how can we solve that? And that's something that you do. Exactly. Yeah. Someone, you know, a lot of the businesses are starting out here as brick and mortar, as physical locations who may be selling products or services that can reach across, you know, the state, the nation, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And having a website that works well and can handle that kind of thing will just improve their sales, increase their ideal audience. Mm -hmm. It's, It's a super important thing. And I think it's something that a lot of small businesses just don't think of when they start their business or they don't really think that, or put that in their mindset, really. Right. And... Here in Canyon City and rural Colorado, a lot of these people have started businesses uh, from ground zero, you Mm -hmm. know, opened a physical location. Uh, It could be a family business. It could have been here for a very long time. And, you know, it's difficult to wear so many hats as a small business owner. Yeah. And you might be excelling in certain areas in your physical location, but maybe you let the online thing kind of slide. Mm -hmm. Um, It can seem very overwhelming for people, intimidating So I could understand why, you know, if you're doing well in one aspect of your business, do you have the time and energy to get it online? Mm -hmm. Um, So I really am trying to educate businesses to the advantages of being online. You know, it doesn't have to be a total time suck. Yeah. You can manage it uh, pretty efficiently and get some good results. Mm Mm-hmm. Where were you before you came to Canyon? <laughs> I moved to Canyon City from New York City. Yeah, so you know it's a, a clear runway. Uh, the direct next step after one of the biggest cities in the world is uh, Canyon City. Could you yes. talk a little bit about that? So I know you have a pretty funny experience of when you first came here. Yeah. So I'm from a small town in northeastern Pennsylvania, so it's not like I just wasn't aware of what small town yeah. life was, but I moved to New York City Um, right out of high school and I was there for seven years Um, so I was in fully in the you know hustle and bustle big city life Mm -hmm. you know we don't have time for much you know say what you mean (laughs) let's get going I need my coffee black and I need it now (laughs) you know just get your point across and move on to the next thing so when my husband and I he was my fiance at the time we our plan was always to come back out to Colorado because we met here in Colorado Mm -hmm. Which is a crazy story in of itself, yeah. but we won't touch on that today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so we were looking somewhere in Colorado. We wanted to definitely be in the mountains, mm-hmm. you know, not really in Denver. You know, we didn't want to transfer from a city to another city kind yeah. of over that life. You can see the mountains kind of, yeah. depending on if the smog yeah. is clear. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, we didn't want to go, you know, suburb area kind of. Mm-hmm. Not the best. So... Canyon City came along, and we liked geographically the location of it, so we decided to just come on out, uh, drove straight, literally left New York City, Queens, where I used to live, stopped in Pennsylvania, and then just kept on going Mm -hmm. to Colorado. Um, So we came down to Canyon City not having a place to live yet. It was very hard to find a living situation Mm -hmm. here. We finally found an entire brand new house to rent, which we didn't necessarily want to do because we didn't need that much space coming Mm -hmm. from a shoebox apartment we thought (laughs) like an apartment out here was huge yeah and then it was you know we didn't really want to spend money on a whole entire house rental um but we had no other choice so we moved in a brand new house in a unbelievable view like right Mm -hmm. in town uh so that was really what 
kept me going because transferring from again the big city to canyon city's small town life was a huge it was a culture shock for sure yeah and i I love this story too (laughs) of the first time that you came to canyon city it was on a a foggy day and you couldn't see the mountains yeah so will my husband had come one other time and he was like it's beautiful it's great you know i can Mm -hmm. we can do it and i was like oh cool all right let's see i know i love colorado it's really beautiful let's go so when we're driving down, it's rainy and foggy all day. Mm-hmm. and Which is really rare for the area, yeah. too. <laughs> and my mom lives up in Fort Collins, so and I've visited a bunch of times. So I knew that like Colorado isn't like back east where it's always rainy and cloudy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we are literally pulling into down 50 into Canyon City, and it's just complete fog. There's not a single mountain in sight. Mm-hmm. So I'm really just seeing like the major like Home Depot, the tractor supply stuff on 50 until you get into that main stretch. And it's kind of a uh, very dated, like mm-hmm. 70s looking <laughs> car garages and yeah. like a Wendy's. And I was like, I ha- it just hit me like a brick wall of where are we? Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, where I'm from isn't, you know, extravagant or anything. It's it's the same type of vibe, but mm-hmm. just different East Coast vibe. <laughs> yeah. But here, it just it just really hit me. And I was like, oh my gosh, where are we? I feel like I've dropped back like 30 years. I just mm-hmm. don't know what's going on. Um, so it, it was really hard. But then the next day, it was sunny. <laughs> I saw the mountains. So then I saw they the mountains. Were there. Yeah. <laughs> And the sunflowers and all that. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. you just need to calm down and yeah. just relax and figure it out. <laughs> I think, too, something that's always fun is um, with with your business, you coming from the East Coast, you have that speed and the efficiency. And then working with uh, some of these smaller businesses where they may have had the slower lifestyle and they may be used to getting a logo in like two months. Yes. And you're like, oh, I've got this done. And it takes a couple days. Yeah, so I came here with that mentality. I still have it pretty bad. Uh, I've calmed <laughs> down a little bit, but I had started when I moved out here. I came from the fine jewelry industry, mm-hmm. and I had always been doing the marketing, website design, social media, graphic design for these companies. Um, not realizing that that's actually the career path I wanted to go down. Mm-hmm. So or even it goes back to like your early days in school where you're kind of teaching yourself coding to do these things as well. Like you had all these pieces, right? Yes. I have loved digital design since MySpace, since early 2000s. I yeah. have always been on MySpace. Even before that, there was like Live Journal and mm-hmm. uh, what was that one? Um, like Zanga or something. Is that right? <laughs> it's something like that. Yeah. And I had been designing like icons. That was a thing that you did. I don't know. Icons was just like these cute little like GIFs. Mm-hmm. GIFs. I say GIFs. I say GIF. Yeah. yeah. But so I, I would be designing those when I was like 10, 11, 12 mm-hmm. on Paint, Microsoft Paint. <laughs> um, then MySpace came and I learned how to HTML code by ripping off people's layouts. I would kind of just copy their code and then like manipulate it into yeah. what I wanted it to like, look oh, hey, like. If I change this, this thing changes. Yeah. And then I went to jewelry school and I took website classes that weren't part of my curriculum, but I just wanted to take them anyway. Mm-hmm. So in a Photoshop class. So I was always interested in it, but I didn't realize that I could make it a career and like jewelry maybe not wasn't supposed to be where I was going down. But yeah. I I still do love jewelry, but this is more fun for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that's how it started. But then, so when we moved here, I knew I wasn't going to be in any sort of fine jewelry industry in Canyon City and I didn't Mm -hmm. want to be really. So I just needed a job, like a little bit of income as my husband started his new job. So I worked at a coffee shop, the Bean Peddler on Main Street. And Mm -hmm. that's where I really learned that my fast paced, like, I'm not rude, but I'm just kind of like, hello there. What can I get for you? Okay. This is what you want. Here you go. Mm -hmm. People probably got coffee in record speed. Yeah. And people (laughs) just expected me to like have small talk. You know, I was a new face and people like to see their regular people behind the counter, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so there was like, like, I've got a line here. Come on. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. And I was just trying to get the job done. Like, you know, here you go. I'm getting you what you want. Sorry. I'm not asking about your grandchildren and their cousins. So that was a huge lesson I had to learn was just like, 
I still don't enjoy small talk that much, but I can at least <laughs> be a little bit more slowed down and calm. <laughs> recovering east coaster yeah so then when i started my own business i had that idea Mm -hmm. in my head um because you've done some work with bean peddler right yeah yeah i do their website and sometimes on their social media and like Mm -hmm. any uh really any tech things they are have going there their e-commerce that they have for like the pos system and all that yeah so i've no like i came into my business knowing that you know you can't just be so cut and dry and just like Mm. get the job done (laughs) so i've made a lot of relationships that way and just like have actually gotten to know people because i'm not so crazy fast but i will still finish jobs and projects very fast yeah i just i just that's how i am i've always Mm -hmm. been that way i used to do my homework in school for the next day while I was still in class of the day I just got the homework yeah. and just finish it. And then so I would get home and be like, I have free time now. <laughs> You're playing the game. <laughs> yeah. So I've just always been like, I get a project and I will finish it mm-hmm. quick. Yeah. Which is good. And it shows. And I think it's something that it's another aspect of one of those things that small businesses are maybe aware of, but they don't necessarily notice it until something like that comes around. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it's like, for me, it's like, I'm making a commitment Mm -hmm. to you to like produce whatever you need and you will get it and you will be having full access, whatever. Uh, A lot of the time people are like, yeah, I was talking to so-and-so and and nothing really happened or I can't like, we kind of just dropped off and it just is like, no, I will, we're going to talk about your project and I will tell you what I can do for you and then I will do it. Mm-hmm. And you're, that's what you can count on. Yeah. Leading directly into that, what are some of the ways that you are solving some problems for small businesses? I really take my time. This is where I have to like really turn off my East Coast and like get it done. <laughs> like, why don't you understand what I'm telling you? Because <laughs> I get it. I get, you know, if you're not, you're a business owner, you're wearing so many different hats mm-hmm. and maybe online it just isn't your forte, which I get. Um so a lot of the friction that I see is that learning anything new that has to do with being online or social media is intimidating to people or mm-hmm. overwhelming or they just don't know where to start. So they never do or they're just like, it's just, you know, it's scary if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. So what I try to do is ease them into it by, you know, exposing them to all these different platforms that we can be using for your website. Mm -hmm. You know, what social media platforms are going to work for your type of business or your product or your service. Um, And just starting there and showing them like, it doesn't need to be complicated. You know, we Mm -hmm. have platforms now that are user friendly in the back end for a reason. They are made for the average business owner to start their own website. Um, Yeah. What I do is going to take it beyond that. Um, It's going to fully set you up from start to finish. And Mm -hmm. then if you so choose, you can maintain it yourself or you can continue to hire me to do it. Mm -hmm. But just exposing these business owners to what it can look like um, and not this big scary machine or all these crazy things that are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't work in one single platform. I will completely tailor a project to the business. Mm -hmm. I will never have a cookie cutter template or project plan for everybody that everyone's just going to fit in. It's going to be completely custom, um, which makes me learn and work across so many different website builders and social media platforms and anything you can think of. Mm -hmm. All the little plugins widgets whatever extra tools like i know a lot of them because of this yeah it's a it's a big part of it i think um a lot of business owners like you said they're wearing different hats they need to run payroll they need to purchase all of the equipment that they may need they need to purchase all of the product that they may need for the equipment to be run Mm -hmm. they need to have all these different moving pieces but they also need to have that digital online presence more so than ever before. Mm-hmm. I think um, during COVID, we saw that for sure of, oh, hey, my company isn't really open right now in a brick and mortar aspect, but I, I think I can sell online. And I think, too, that custom side of things, like you said, I mean, you need to have a different platform depending on if you're selling horses or if you yes. are uh, selling fence material or if you're selling... 
uh, cookies or yeah. you're a platform for a restaurant. Like I think there's a lot of different things that each of those businesses need that is going to require something different. Yeah, for sure. And that's what I love. In this area, I've been exposed to so many different types of businesses Mm -hmm. outside of your regular, like, real estate, like any job that could be across the nation. Mm -hmm. But here, there's so many people doing so many cool things that not a ton of people are aware of. Sometimes there's a lot of, like, huge machinery or, like, just really interesting things being produced here in Canyon or, Mm -hmm. like, Fremont County or just neighboring areas. Yeah. So I've learned so many things. I, I do know about fencing now, which I just never thought I would know about fencing. Yeah. Uh, like there's just so many business industries that I, you know, have an idea about now that's mm-hmm. just interesting and keeps it fun. You probably know more about fencing now <laughs> than everyone in your apartment building in New York. Oh, for sure. Yes. <laughs> Maybe a few of the surrounding ones as yeah. well. Yeah. Like I never thought. Never. We like traveling out to Hartzell mm-hmm. in Park County and just like being in the open wilderness. Imagine like the on- landscape <laughs> of a, of an alien planet <laughs> with strong winds mm-hmm. and uh, a spattering of trees, uh, maybe a creek and tall grass with like rocky outcropping. Yes. That's Hartzell. Mm-hmm. Going up there. We, we, we went up there together mm-hmm. for a video shoot and... <laughs> And like buffalo just like on the side of the road. <laughs> it's crazy. And then you go from that to where you're working with uh, a client for a whole rebrand design. Like it's this area is very unique in terms of the variety of different businesses that you can mm-hmm. can support. Another struggle that I help with, I forgot to mention, is the brand mm-hmm. portion. So whenever I say brand I really want to get deep into here cuz that Yeah. Describe what the heck a brand branding yeah, is brand for people design that may is- need to know that yeah it's kind of a word that can just be vague and people don't Mm -hmm. really understand it but if you say logo logo design people understand that um but in today's market no matter what business you're in um because we have online e-commerce and just websites and all that the industry no matter which one it is is so saturated Mm -hmm. that you want to really stand out and become a visual that people recognize and start trusting you know yeah and a part so, of that is having a cohesive brand presence. Exactly. What do you look like? What do you sound like? Mm-hmm. What is When someone says this is a Cat Fox design post, what does that even mean? Yeah. So having consistent logo design across, if you have a brick and mortar, it's like on the front of your window. It's on your business cards. It's on any print materials that you produce. It's mm-hmm. on your website. Um, defining like your color, something as simple as that people think is like oh no big deal like yeah sometimes yeah. i use blue sometimes i use red mm-hmm. or um, even the the i mean you can have a visual like a very vibrant color for your branding online but if you're going to be working in print at all you're going to have to change that yeah exactly so what brand design is and what i develop for people is kind of a map of your logo how it looks mm-hmm. different variations that can be used across you know real life materials and also online areas color palette that is digital friendly print friendly all of that kind of stuff all regulated with pantone the mm-hmm. color system <laughs> um what your typography looks like you know what fonts are you using um and the importance of defining that and then consistently using it the same way everywhere mm-hmm. you are advertising everywhere you appear um it will just keep on it will show people that First, you're professional, you're organized, and then it will become a thing where they finally are recognizing it and you're building a loyal client base because, oh, hey, I remember seeing that one logo. Like, I remember that specific color, like, it's on this billboard, and here it is the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm passing the shop right now. Wow, I've seen that before. Yeah. Um. So, in the past decade, I would say that's been a very strong thing. I mean, giant brands companies have been doing it forever Mm -hmm. but now it's finally trickling down to like small businesses Uh, you don't have to be a corporation to have a consistent brand and to have brand guidelines why is that so important and what are some of the struggles that you see with like the the rural small business side of things with that so a lot of the time i see we have some staple businesses here like we have 
brick and mortars. We have like vans, trucks driving around that you recognize because they've been here for so long or they've just done such great things in our community. Um, And some of them, not all of them, might have had, you know, a logo kind of thing that they put on their van or their store, Mm -hmm. but they never thought that like, this is the defined logo that I need to use across anything. So they might have business cards that have like a totally, completely (laughs) different look to it. Totally just not related to Mm -hmm. anything else. (laughs) It was the font I had in Microsoft Word. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or like they kind of borrowed some images from Mm -hmm. something like that. Or like, you know, those online tools that you can just like print business cards on. Clip art for. Yeah. Clip art. (laughs) Don't get me started on clip art. But, because they, you know, the idea of consistency wasn't like prevalent to them mm-hmm. at the time when they were starting it. Maybe I'm just assuming, but a lot of my experience is that they, oh, I yeah, I do have a logo. You know, it's it's my sign above my shop. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, well, do you have the digital file? How am I supposed to get that exact sign on your website? Yeah, you know, I like we can digitize these things now. Um, mm-hmm. As a graphic designer, I can do that, but that was never the thought process. You know, I need to have a solid file, digital file that I can make my sign with. I can make my mm-hmm. business cards with. I can put on my website. That has been kind of like an education piece that I'm slowly introducing, and others as well. Businesses here are introducing the same concept. But people are getting it. They understand that if, if you start with like a significant look that you custom developed, mm-hmm. um, it's just going to get you more recognition. You know, people are going to know who you are by just what they've seen yeah. on a print ad, mm-hmm. on a digital ad, on a business card, whatever, mm-hmm. a pamphlet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think too, like on that topic there is the the struggle of like hey do you have a logo yeah we've got a logo do, do you have it a transparent background oh yes transparent background do you have it scalable is there a white version is there a black version does that actually work mm-hmm. is there a printable size is is, is, it, is it an ai file yes. like is it something <laughs> that i can actually kind of warp and kind of fit for different aspects of things there's so many different pieces that you have to think of and I think something too the where your business is kind of special is you have a lot of these avenues where you are out in the field and you're educating people because you're working a lot with the uh, Southern Colorado Small Business. Yeah, the Small Business Development Center. Yes. In Southern SBDC. Colorado. Yeah, SBDC. They're based in Pueblo, but they cover multiple rural counties, mm-hmm. including Fremont, uh, Pueblo, like Huerfano. Um, Custer, uh, there's a couple others, but yeah, these very small, they're considered the rural, uh, SBDC of mm-hmm. Colorado. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're out in the field and you're teaching people like, Hey, the little, um, f- do you say favicon or favicon? I say favicon. I say favicon as well. I just heard the other day favicon and I was like, that is incorrect. There's no way that's how, but it's the same thing as GIF and JIF. Yeah. But I was like, oh, have I been saying it wrong the entire time? But no, I, it's just, you know, it depends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, people, small businesses didn't understand kind of, oh, hey, there's that gray square up in the corner when you go to your website. Yes. You can put a logo there. Yep. Yeah. So through the SBDC, I have been teaching digital classes, like virtually. There was one in person, sometimes they're in person, but mostly online, um, where I am sharing my expertise in usually it's about e-commerce, but then that also includes like website best practices. Mm -hmm. It includes, I have always have a super long section on the branding because I just, that's my favorite part and it's so important. Mm -hmm. That should be your number one starting point. And then digital marketing, you know, where can you be advertising? You know, which tools should you be on to expose yourself to more people? So through them, I have been educating so many small businesses, just like something that I never would have been able to do by myself in such a great capacity Mm -hmm. because I'm speaking to like dozens of people all at once instead of me going around or however I may be doing it to like business by business. Mm -hmm. So that's been an amazing thing that's happening here in our county, in our area. Yeah. I mean, I I think with the rise of infrastructure getting even better, we have a lot of redundancy in our uh, internet here in Fremont County. 
and we can now reach a broader audience mm-hmm. and you can focus on Colorado. You can expand to United States or like you can go wherever you need that value. And you're doing this through the technology available to you as well as expanding your reach across all of these other counties mm-hmm. that they need the support. They may not be, I mean, Pueblo is quite large, but there are still sections of it where they need that support. They mm-hmm. need no matter where you are, no matter what size business you are, you need good marketing and you need someone who understands it and stuff like that. That's super helpful. Yes. I always say people are always like, oh, man, I feel so dumb. I just like uh, being on the computer is so frustrating to me. And I always say you can't be good at everything. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody is good at everything. As a small business owner, you cannot juggle every aspect and be perfect at all of them like first of all you have to like be running the type of business like you usually found that you have a talent Mm -hmm. or like you you know want to expose a certain thing to our area um that's probably what you're best at you know that's the whole reason for your business you just happen to have to do all these yeah you have to do like you know payroll you know if you have employees you know you have to figure out like sales tax like all that Mm -hmm. stuff so most of the time people already have that covered and i'm like that's the hard part (laughs) you know websites and being online you may not be totally comfortable with it but you don't have to be you don't Mm -hmm. have to be a like a website developer just because you have a business so I'm really just trying to support businesses because they're supporting me. Like my business is a thing because they need my help, yeah. you know, and uh-huh. I'm most likely using their services in products in return mm-hmm. you know, or if I had already been, you know? Yeah. So it's like, we're all just supporting each other. And yeah, I always say people always try to beat themselves up and I'm like, no, do you think I know how to like, I don't even like supply an inventory system from <laughs> like manufacturing? No. Mm-hmm. And you're doing that perfectly. But I do know websites and online and digital spaces really yeah. well. So You do the thing you're great at. <laughs> yeah. I'll do the thing that I'm great at. Yes. And together we can do great things. Exactly. Yeah. We're all in this together. You know, you don't have to be the best person in the world for every little. And you, and you shouldn't be. I, I was listening to a podcast called The Colin and Samir Show. And they're talking about content creators and the creator economy and how. Have you heard of the, the YouTuber Mr. Beast? Yeah. So he's one of the biggest on the platform. Yeah. Crazy big scale. He's always like, if you have five things that you need to do and you divide your time by those five things, you're only going to be working on those things for one fifth of the time. Mm -hmm. While they may, they can all require 100% of your time, but you're trying to do all five of them. You're not, it's going to take you so much longer. And if you do have someone that you, you, Maybe you could do the logo, but is it really necessary for you to take time away from your main priority Mm -hmm. to do the logo? Yes. Or is it more worth it to outsource that so you can focus on the broader vision of your company or your business or your organization? Yeah. And it's like, you're really good at whatever business you have. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at the design, the logo, the website part. Mm -hmm. So you've already mastered your part. I mastered my part. Why wouldn't we work together where both of the elements coming together are going to be really great instead Mm of, you know, do you consider yourself artsy, a designer? Uh, If you don't, maybe just hire that out because I do and I will make it (laughs) amazing and really nice looking and um, it will have a job of, you know, grabbing the attention of people who you want to buy your products or your services or whatever it is so there's a whole extra level of stuff i know that i apply to the these designs online that you may not have known when you were creating a really simple logo like Mm -hmm. whatever yeah it's an investment it's an investment but it's worth it because you know time is money you Mm -hmm. won't have to spend that time doing it yourself and then my expertise is gonna get you a nice website but it's actually going to do something for you mm-hmm. afterwards it's not just going to be up in the, in the interwebs just yeah, exactly. floating around it's actually going to get you people that you want to get into your business or mm-hmm. using your service yeah and and uh, another important aspect of that is like you said you need to have a website but you need also need to know why you have a website you, I, I, I see a lot of uh, small businesses that were like oh yeah I need video 
Well, what is what is the motivation for the video? What do you want it to do? Because we can make you a video, but unless you know why you have the you why you need the video, do you want to promote more sales? Do you want to promote a specific product? Do you just want to get your name known for the specific thing that you do that people aren't really aware of, or do you just want more awareness? These are things that you need to be aware of, especially branding. Like, what do your social posts look like? What do they sound like? Because you can even go into the branding side of things where you're, oh yeah, this is your your wording style guide. If you want to go yep. that far, like mm-hmm. you can do all of these yeah. things. Who are you talking to? Mm-hmm. You know, is it first person, third person? Yes. Are you speaking from the yeah. customer? Yeah, I always say to people as well as the other thing that I always say to them: don't beat yourself up if you already have a website. Does it, is it doing something for you? Are you getting a return from it or is it just there? Cause it mm-hmm. like, you just felt like you needed to be on the world wide web. Yeah. That's another struggle that I come across a lot is like COVID really ramped it up in our area. Um, a lot of businesses did not have a website and they just realized, you know, a website would help mm-hmm. increase sales or whatever Yeah. while we're physically shut down or whatever was happening. But a lot of the time that resulted in just slapping something up just mm-hmm. to have it up. Just, you know, I've heard that you have to have a website. I've heard <laughs> that you have to be on Facebook. But if you're not really defining like what you want the return to be, like, do you want to sell the products? Do you want to, you know, capture more customers, more contact info? So I always ask if you have a website, what is it doing? If it's not doing anything and you haven't touched it in months, years, then it's time to think about it and redo it and you know define your goals and mm-hmm. then get it so it is getting you that return yeah because like you said like if you want to show off your products that's very different than if you want to get people's contact information yeah. those are two very different websites right exactly so it's it's a very important thing to be aware of and i think it's it's good and i, I think we're we're getting into um a really fun time in everyone's businesses because we're seeing that fire of like, oh, hey, we can put all these things together. Mm-hmm. It's so fun when you when you help someone and you see in their eyes like that understanding of like, oh, I can do that now. Mm-hmm. Like that's huge. Yeah, it's, you know, helping them release the fear or the intimidation that they were feeling at first. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like a gateway drug. You know, I show (laughs) them how these things work and how simple they can be if you just get comfortable using it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, releasing fear is a great feeling. You know, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So then you can focus on something else. Yeah, it's big. Mm -hmm. To kind of close out this podcast episode, what do you love about Fremont County? This county is like, when you... As an outsider of Colorado, you're not from here. When you think of Colorado, you think of Denver. You think of like Rocky Mountain National Park. You think of like those northern areas Mm -hmm. uh, just because, I don't know, they're more populated and they're just, you know, where all the people are going. Like Vail and Aspen, like all Mm -hmm. the fancy ski places. (laughs) So Fremont County is so special because it's like hidden down in the little southern area Mm -hmm. of Colorado Springs, I guess you could say. And not a lot of people know about it if you're not from this state. Or even if you are, some people have no idea, like, what Canyon City or Fremont County is. Yeah. Um, But we're in the best location geographically. Mm -hmm. You know, we're right in the mountains. Like, our literally outside of our houses and our businesses are these insane mountains. Mm -hmm. We can drive an hour to, like, the snow-capped mountain, 14ers. Yeah. Um we're only 45 minutes away from a bigger city Mm -hmm. we're only two hours from denver you know we're like right in that perfect spot so that's what i love so much and as a county we're so spread out Mm -hmm. but each little city little town has its own vibe yeah and everyone's very Mm close-knit um and i feel like ever since the pandemic happened and all this political nonsense went through people are like joining back together and realizing that we can help each other out and you Mm -hmm. know educating each other on all the different aspects of business and Mm -hmm. life (laughs) yeah exactly um we can focus on the goal and 
less so kind of like, oh, hey, you may have a different opinion than I do, yeah. but we're still going to we're still working to make our community better. Yeah. So we can we can kind of have those conversations in a much nicer way, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. And we're just more chill down here. You know, we have like zero regulations when it comes to outdoor activities. <laughs> like you can just like go hike a mountain if you want to. You don't have to pay for parking like mm-hmm. all of our areas the river are well maintained 10 minutes away and it's like a mars landscape yeah and it's very different than you go another 10 minutes the other way Mm -hmm. and it's this incredible gorge view mountain like we've gone mountain biking together a few times and Mm -hmm. like you you, one trail you can have five different experiences that look like five different places in colorado yeah and that's all here it's cool it's very yeah the terrain is insane how i did i did not realize that like cactuses and lizards Mm -hmm. were a thing in colorado until i moved (laughs) down here like i didn't i didn't you'd think of like giant you know aspens and Mm -hmm. pine trees yeah but like come down here we have cacti and scorpions and crazy like (laughs) desert things but it's so cool because Mm -hmm. it's like a mixture of both we have mountains and then we have really nice weather Mm -hmm. it's always sunny it is (laughs) yes (laughs) well thank you for taking the time to come on the podcast today really uh, enjoyed this discussion on uh, marketing and uh, kind of the value it has so thank you for having me oh yeah all of the links to cat stuff will be in the description of the episode and at ruralreboot.com.